find that bevel. I lost it for a second. Okay. Make sure that bevel is there. You gotta feel it, you know? And if you gotta slow down, slow down. This is not a race. This is not, uh, you know, it's a race. It's not a race. It is not a race, guys. Make sure you take your time, because like I said, if you take your time with this tool, this tool will, it will pay for itself. And I call it a tool, you know, without the rest of the body, it's just a blade. But I, it, without the blade, the plane is just the body. So this thing is a tool as well, you know. And I'm going to stress that in terms of individuals such as myself with neurological conditions or depression or whatever, you know, got to take care of that mind because it is also a tool. It's part of the machine that runs you, you know, take a breather, smoke break, smoke them if you got them, right? Uh, do what works for you to make sure that you're in the right state of mind, you know, healthy keep your mind healthy and your body will follow more or less and in some cases like mine it, it won't but at least you know excuse me a positive outlook or at least not quitting that goes a long way you know and um Just fight, just fight, fight that urge to quit. And, and, you know, refine that edge in your life, like we're refining this one. You know, find that edge. And go back, let's get that fluid. And you don't wanna, I'm not using the blade, the blade edge for this. I'm kind of using this side here, so you get that dispersed on there. Find the bevel and go back to your figure eights. Make sure you don't lose that bevel. Keep. Make sure you pull your whole body into it, not just your hands. Okay. I don't mean sway like you're dancing. Make sure you're using your arms and, you know, you don't want to do that because that will change your angle, you know. But, you know, use your body. You know, keep your core intact, you know. Keep your stomach muscles a little tight, you know. Work your body while you're working your arms and your mind, you know? And we are definitely getting there. We're not going to get exactly there because, you know, we're going to be doing that forever. And the blade edge is already polished. So, I mean, we are definitely there. Find that bevel and see we're already losing parts of the burr. And I don't know if I can find a good piece. I got a little tiny one here. Can't really see it. it. It's almost fine, like a cat hair. And it's a little, you can't even see it anymore. It's like, it's, it's, it's so fine. But on the opposite end, when you're doing this right, on this side, you're going to get that little burr, or burr, or burr. Whatever 
it's called. Um, yeah, it comes out when I'm nervous. Um, you're going to get that on this side, but as I'm honing, it's kind of coming off, and that's kind of cool too. But uh, So I don't think I'll ever get one of those like in the other channel. Maybe I will, you know, it may come off with a, ooh, it looks like a little fine little metal hair. <laughs> and uh, I've had that happen once. Also with a hot blade. So, I mean, this is coming off now as we're working, so. It's just the process. Just go nice and slow. Make sure you don't lose that bevel. So if you gotta do this every now and then, like I do, do it. <laughs> Refraction coming off of that plate edge there. I wish you could see that. But when you get it, I mean, when you do this, you'll see it. Remember, hold it up directly to the light. Like if you're the light source, remember that. Hold it up to the light source where you can see that plate edge. And if you can see anything ref ref reflecting off of that right there, it's not where it needs to be. Okay? Take it back, take it back down if you need to, down to a, a lower grit, you know, but, um, you know, if you need to, just do what you have to to get these blades where they need to be. And I'm probably taking a little too much time, but like I said, I personally take pride, and I'm not saying other woodworkers don't, but I take pride in this because, you know, I don't have a light leader other than this. You know, I live off of my disability from the government, from the VA, and you know, anything else I make here is what I'm really considering my livelihood. You know, I did my job in my, in my military service, and that's what the government owes me for everything that I did. And, you know, but we'll leave that alone. But you know, this is my job. I take pride in my tools. You know, it may not look like it right now. My work area is kind of messy, but uh, Google pictures of Einstein's desk. Man, his desk was just cluttered, you know. And they, he used to say the, the marks of a cluttered mind are cluttered desks or cl cluttered work area. So what is a empty or clean work area? indicative of so just you know that's a, that's my defense um, um may not be working on multiple things but i'm experimenting a lot experimenting a lot i'm trying to learn new stuff and um i'm constantly jumping because my mind is just racing um, a million miles a minute and uh you know, to me, I, 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 I really find it difficult to, uh, I don't know, to not have everything out staring at me in the face because then I don't work on it. You know, out of sight, out of mind really is uh, a thing with me. So, uh, wow. Well. And that's all comes down to these angles in your fingers, wrists. You know, I've learned my body. I've learned this aspect of the uh, tool maintenance. So I know where my body needs to be. Um, I can stand, don't get me wrong. And I can walk. But it's just not as, uh, you know, I can't stand for very long and I can't walk for very long. So,
I'm in this chair and that's comfortable. That's what I do. You generally need to be a little more above. You need to be looking down on it so you can get that in your, you know, learn that wrist placement properly, you know, and you're going to be down here. I know, I know you probably can't see my face, but you're going to be down here doing this, right? And I can just go through the motions. Now I need to lean against my, you know, but same. Figure eight. You know, you learn that placement, you know. Keep that bevel. Um, remember I told you I round off these uh, edges so what we're gonna do here I'm gonna do this differently so you guys can see you, this is essential okay two fingers here one here and you're gonna rock ever so slightly because that needs to be razor sharp as well right make sure you don't lose that bevel and voila And that one looks fine too. Again, now wipe off any excess, anything. Check that against your light, and we are there. All right, we're gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna to go to our final step. So this is what I meant by the final part of the process. And what I got here is a sa uh, sawdust covered, well, not really, it's not too bad. Sawdust covered leather strop on a piece of, uh, I believe it's uh, pine. And now, this is the final step in the process of polishing your blade. You know, I like to put it in here. I have a built-in trough, so it kind of, you know, keeps it where it needs to be. And same process, no figure eight needed. You just go in circles here, and you're gliding across the leather here, just like this. Again, I'm going to go through this process several times between now and, you know, I, I sharpen my, depending on use, you know, you got to sharpen your blades several times a day. You know, I work with hard wood, so, you know, depending on how big of a board I'm working with, I'm sharpening my blade, my blades at least twice. So, um, again, here we go. Final test. No pressure. Razor sharp. I'm not going to do any uh, hair cutting because... I love my body hair, and you know, when you you mess up and you make one hair mad, the rest of them leave and go away. And I want to keep, I want to keep my locks. 
So uh, I'm gonna put my plane blade, my plane back together, and I'm gonna just show you one quick shave because my shoulders are hurting and my, like I said, my elbow. I threw out my elbow earlier. So just one quick, one quick pass, and then we'll call it a blade. We'll call it a blade. All right. See you in a bit. All right, guys. Here we are with our plane all put together. Again, this is our number seven jointing plane. Hawk tool blade, chip breaker, and let's see how it does. All right, we got a uh, piece of mesquite that I've already surfaced the other side uh, the hard way before I got the blade done. So uh, we're just gonna take a couple shavings and see how it worked out. All right, ready? It's pretty flat. Another thing we can do is just to make sure we're all squared up and ready to go. This is our number 80 cabinet scraper. It's ready to be sharpened. Beautiful. Then make sure again. You get a straight edge, and again, this thing I had to, uh, it wasn't exactly, uh, I'm still spacing on that word. It wasn't exactly flush, so I had to uh, take it over my joiner, because that thing is zero degrees, you know, to a thousandth of an inch, and so took it on there, sandpaper, flattened it out, so I got one really good flat side, and we're going to run this over, and... Pretty much flat this way, and then you run it diagonally. And pretty much flat this way, except I got a bit of a knot here, but this is the back of the piece anyway. So, just you take a look front, no wait, back. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed my uh, little tutorial on how to sharpen a plane blade. And I hope you're as happy with the results as, uh, as I am. Catch you later. Burn on.